Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek, co-hosting the show with Ananga Sabir. Today, we're discussing some helpful strategies to start your day with more peace. Welcome to another episode, Ananga. Hey, Shan. So good to be with you this week, talking about something that we haven't touched on in quite some time. We often talk about sleep and different routines and stuff, but What about starting your day? How can we start our day feeling more calm and relaxed and at peace? Yeah, those living with anxiety morning times can be particularly challenging. And as we say, when we talk about sleep, a good day starts the night before. The same goes with the the morning. Protect your sleep. A good morning starts with a good night's sleep. Mm. Good sleep supports our nervous system. It helps support our mental well-being. This we know, this is not new information, but um, listening to a guided relaxation for sleep to release stress from the day and help you relax into a more settled sleep is a really good move for a calmer morning or practice some light qigong or something just to make sure we're not going to bed with, with tension and with all those thoughts from the day. Rattling around, tapping, EFT tapping before sleep can be very good as well, but this has all been covered in our sleep episode, so. Just briefly, yeah, look after your sleep as much as you can so that you start the day refreshed. The first thing that my husband and I say to each other each day is, how did you sleep? And then a conversation starts from there. And and really, the day uh, unfolds so much more beautifully when we have had a good rest. Yeah, definitely it does. Another thing that really helps is to wake gently it's quite surprising what a jolt to the nervous system and to our heart rate it can be to jump up out of bed or woken up by a, a sudden alarm clock having not used an alarm clock for many many years uh, i'm blessed with the ability to wake up when i need to wake up and, and i don't need that i know that's not the case for for everyone but i remember there being a time when i had that obnoxious uh, beeping radar sound to, to get out of bed. Such a jolt. Yeah. Really nice, especially in the darker months, is to wake up with a wake-up light, one of those timed lights that comes on and gradually, gradually brings a bright light into your room. I bought my daughter one of those about, it must be about nine years ago now. I was going to say, it's been some time now. Yeah, <laughs> and she still loves it especially on the dark mornings where it uh, just brings this increasingly bright light. It's supposed to be like a simulated sunrise. Mm. So it's like a timed light? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it starts coming on very gently quite a while before you need to wake up, and then it just gets gradually brighter and brighter. And you can have bird sounds. She has a cuckoo, which is really funny. (laughs) (laughs) This cuckoo comes on with it, and he gets gradually louder. You know, anything like that that you can think of that you might like to try that's not being jolted awake. It's such a shock to our nervous system. and We we don't need it anyway, but if we're anxious, we really don't need it. I've also found that establishing a consistent wake-up time is helpful Mm -hmm. because you regulate your body's internal clock and it makes it easier to wake up feeling refreshed versus moving your schedule all around and waking up extra early one day and late another, and it, your body is kind of like, what? What's happening? Yeah. Ayurveda recommends that same time to bed and same time awake as much as you can. Ayurveda recommends getting to bed around 10 p.m., heading to sleep around that time. There's an energy really conducive to sleep around that time. But, yeah, consistent, not big changes, and it's easier on our internal clock, it's easier on our digestion. Um, So many bodily functions appreciate that regulated time as much as possible. The other way that you can wake gently and start your day with more peace is to avoid looking at the news or social media. Just leave it. Let's not start our day with that information because 
the news can add stress and anxiety to your day. Social media easily draws us in and gives us a sense of engagement, but without really doing anything helpful. So if you are habituated to look at your phone, have it set up with something like a positive podcast or an audio book or a guided practice or even just a, a beautiful screensaver, but at the same time, be mindful of it because it's so easy for us to just grab that device and start scrolling. And I try to just leave it be. I don't want to be on anything electronic the, f- the first 30 minutes that, that I get up. We're not going to miss anything. We're not going to miss out on anything <laughs> if we carve out the time in the morning to just be away from it until we need to get on with our day and whatever it is we might be doing electronically. Yeah, I've always kept my phone out of my bedroom unless when my daughter's away or out late and I just want to check she's she's back okay, then I'll have my phone in my room. But the majority of the time, I keep it out of my room. I don't want the energy of the phone there. But I notice that as nieces and nephews and people close to my heart have got older and started traveling, I noticed I'd get up in the morning and the dialogue in my head would be, Let's see how everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. And I'd get a hot drink and go and check on my phone. How's everyone doing? Any messages, any photos? Everyone okay? (laughs) You know? Mm -hmm. And I got stuck. And it's not something I'd I'd ever done before. It was just as people got older and started moving around in my family more, I'd I'd check in and then I'd check something else. And um, that became a really sticky habit. What I say became, it's still there. I'm working on it. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's quite disturbing to me how easy it is to get hooked. Oh, yeah. Well, I can completely relate. Having my daughter away at school and our primary communication is texting. And sometimes I have to just remind myself doesn't mean that I have to be on it right now. I know this is big for so many of us and for our kids, and it's a, an invitation to be more mindful of what you're doing with your electronics first thing in the day. Just be mindful of it. And if you can leave that phone alone for the first 15 minutes, first 30 minutes of your day, then wow, you've just done something really unusual for most people. Yeah. And there's so many, as we're going to talk about in a moment, there are so many better options that we can use that time for. I've just started reading a book called Stolen Focus. It's um, getting a lot of press in the UK at the moment. It's a non-fiction book of the month in uh, my favourite bookstore here. So I just started reading it and it was shocking and sobering and very good, very well written, very nice writing. So I recommend reading that. I'm reading it with a view to regaining uh, more time and more attention because um, as I've just confessed, I have become a little bit more snagged in the mornings than I than I used to be, and I don't like it, and I want to change it. Yeah, yeah. I've always been up and meditating, reading, and, and I still do those things, but I benefit better if I do them first mm-hmm. with a clear mind. So, yeah, Stolen Focus is a really interesting read. The other suggestion is in the morning to replace your caffeine with essential oils. Oils like peppermint or orange or lemon balm are all really beautiful, invigorating scents that you can take in. And uh, that's something that I've added to my morning routine. I absolutely love it. That can be such a nice ritual. And that's what we need, really, are healing rituals in the morning um, to feel positive, to feel peaceful and to keep anxiety in check. So to get up and use essential oils to gently awaken and enliven the mind, but without overstimulating it and taxing it. It's a really nice thing to do. I like to shower in the morning. Ayurveda teaches that there are different energies that can affect our mind, different qualities of nature. And one of them settles on us very heavily when we sleep. It's called tamaguna. 
it can make us feel slow. Um, little, it can make us feel a bit fearful, lethargic. So um, I like to wash that off in the mornings. And I really find it helps my mind to, um, to take a shower. And sometimes I'll repeat it in the day if I'm challenged with my mind. Some people who practice a, a Vedic lifestyle say washing the modes off because the, the English translation for that is the modes of material nature. So we say, get out the modes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. This tamagun is a lower mode. It's a lower energy. And it really can. If you've had a dream that feels kind of sticky and sad, nostalgic, um, shower it off. Mm. And use some essential oils in the shower. Another thing that can be a helpful way of using technology is to have it set with a happy playlist, something good to listen to and have that set to go and get that in there quickly <laughs> before we get to the phone. I've moved my walking practice into the morning. I used to do it in the afternoon and I found that if I do it within the first couple of hours of waking up, and again, I, I realize I have a little bit more of a flexible schedule, so I don't have to get it in before I head out the door, but I do find that I'm much more energized for the rest of the day if I walk in the morning, even if it's just for 20 minutes. And you could do even less than that. But uh, I do find that moving lifts the energy of my mind and helps improve my mood. Yeah. And so I look forward to it. It's not something like, oh, I have to get on the treadmill. And it's like, no, I, this is good. And if I want to, I can listen to an audio book. I can listen to a class, I can practice my access consciousness work or, or whatever, and come away feeling so much better than, than when I don't do it. Yeah. And it's the same thing as taking a shower. It's, it's counteracting that same energy, that tamagun energy moving, because it's a lethargic energy. So it's an opposite to that. It's definitely good, definitely good to move, take a shower, do some stretching. And uh, just not have our minds have that kind of foggy, holding us hostage thing that it can do in the mornings. Anxiety Slayer is sponsored by BetterHelp. There's no question that when you're feeling good, you can experience the sense of being in the flow of life. But sometimes life can throw you a curveball and you may find that you need extra support. When my daughter was Going off to college in the throes of the pandemic, I found myself in a really challenging place, and working with a therapist helped me settle my anxious mind. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is an excellent option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Simply fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and also you can switch therapists at any time. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Slayer today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Slayer. Before the break, we were talking about a bunch of different ideas that you could use and try to wake up gently. And the one thing that we didn't talk about that is important is to have a healthy breakfast in the morning because eating a nutritious breakfast can really help fuel your body and mind for the day ahead. It doesn't have to be a huge breakfast, but something warm and something slow burning that is ideal for a nourishing start to the day that won't spike your blood sugar. And for those listening in who aren't at home in the morning, who, who get up and have to get moving and, and get off to a job, pre-planning is going to be really helpful for you. And my husband gets up quite early and, and has to get out of the house early, and we always want to make sure that he has something. So for him, it's usually a couple of hard-boiled eggs, and it might be some avocado. It might be uh, a slice of rye toast or something, just something so that he can fuel his day and it's planned so that it, that it doesn't take a lot of extra time before he has to get on the road. Yeah, that's the thing is to just have it set and uh, and have your routine that your body knows. You know, again, it's helpful to eat 
your breakfast around the same time as much as possible. And whatever we're eating to sit and eat, don't eat on the go, grabbing a coffee and grabbing a pastry or something on the go. It's not going to nourish us. It's going to give us a quick hit of energy and then we're going to drop. I like to start my mornings with turmeric tea or a lemon and ginger tea, depending on the season, something anti-inflammatory, something cleansing. And I really like cereal coffees with oat milk, um, like chicory coffee or caro is another one that a friend introduced me to about 30 years ago now. And it's um, barley and rye, different uh, malted and toasted cereals, and you just have it with hot milk. It's really nice. It feels very grounding and soothing to the stomach. So that can be a nice morning drink, soothing morning drink. The other thing that you might want to invite into your daily practice is to reflect on something that you want to do that day, because anxiety can pull us into a state of avoidance and objection. We get snagged into thinking about how we feel and how uncomfortable it is, and then it's just like this downward spiral. But if you practice reflecting on something you want to do on the other side of an anxious morning, that'll make a big difference. For example, meeting a friend after work or having a nice relaxing evening with your family, knowing that you are going to come back for another chapter of a book that you're interested in or really finding inviting or doing something creative, making time and knowing that when you get home after work, you have some time to do whatever that might be, whether it be journaling or painting or gardening or, or whatever, something to look forward to makes all the difference. Yeah, it's like bookending your day. This is something we recommended some time ago when somebody asked a question about helping a child through an anxious school day. And one thing that really helps is to have something for them to look forward to on the other side of the day, you know, maybe take them to the park or take them swimming or that you're going to read a nice book with them, make them their favorite supper, something to look forward to on the other side of that of that challenging time. And that works for us too. Otherwise, we, we can wake up and just think of the things we might not want to face or the things that are taxing us. And it puts them in that temporary space when we know we've got something to look forward to on the other side. And also, anxiety really draws our attention to think of all the things we don't want, how we don't want to feel, and what we don't want to do. And just the simple act of counterbalancing that with things that we do want to feel and do as alternatives brings a bit of help in to the mind. Yeah, it's a good practice. All of this is a good practice. Pick what works for you and and leave the rest. Before we close today, we absolutely need to touch on feeding your mind in the morning. We talked a little bit about this, but do something you love in the morning, whether it's reading or writing or listening to music. I invite you to practice mindfulness. Just taking a few minutes to focus on your breath and to be present and to look outside, whether it's gray or whether the sun is shining or whatever is going on to connect that way. Help clear your mind and be in the present moment. This really does help you start your day with a sense of calm. Yeah. And as I've shared on the podcast many times, I like to journal in the morning. And uh, it really helps clear my mind. It helps me set intentions. It helps me remember my gratitudes. But also, sometimes I'll flick back or or I have an app I journal in called Day One, which will show you what was happening on this day last year, something I've mentioned before. And I find that really a helpful review. And it shows me patterns of my mind and and my life and and what helps me consistently over time. And one thing that really does help me is this point that you just made of feeding your mind in the morning, having mental nutrition as well as physical nutrition, as well as food, food for the mind, giving the mind something to chew on other than what we're worried about or we're uncomfortable about is so important. And that's helped me as much as anything I've ever done to look after my mental well-being and the 
beauty of this journaling practice that I have is that it reminds me of that. Every so often an entry will come round and I'll say, oh, I got up and read this, or I chanted my japa, I practiced my meditation, and um, I'll make some notes of something I read, a passage, a reflection, something that really gripped my attention. So that gets brought round for my consideration and, and remembering again, which is great. But what often happens in, in that journal is I'll say, I'm so glad I meditated or read this this morning because when this happened later in my day, I was more protected, I was more buffered, and I know I handled things better. I had more resilience because of how I started my day. Mm. So really important to, to feed our mind in the morning, take care of our mind in the morning, and then we're more resilient for, for whatever comes. Oh, we're just going to have a better day anyway, and we're going to have good things to, to reflect on. And I also invite you to remember that it's important to experiment and find the routines that work best for you. We've given you a lot to think about here today. And even if you just choose one or two, give it a try, stay with it for a while, see what fits, discard the rest. What works for one person may not work for another, but boy, if you just choose one or two, I promise you, you're going to have a better start to your day. Thanks for listening to Anxiety Slayer. If you love our podcast, please consider exploring our Patreon for loads of Anxiety Slayer extras for calming anxiety, including exclusive posts, guided meditations, tapping sessions, popular episodes from our archives, and behind-the-scenes conversations. You can learn more at patreon.com slash anxietyslayer.